Welcome to the Nicholas 11 X12 technology. Today we're looking at the Intel Core i7-4770K unlocked Haswell CPU. This is the flagship model of the fourth generation of Intel Core processors. But here's the box with a new design now. Again this is an Intel Core i7 processor, to be specific the i7-4770K, which uses the new LJ1150 socket. Please don't try to install the CPU into the previous generation LG1155 socket, it simply will not work. On the side of the box are some highlights of the CPU. This i7-4770K features the new Intel HD graphics 4600 integrated graphics. According to Intel we should be able to see a major performance boost over the older Intel HD graphics 4000 graphics that was used on the previous generation Intel i7-3770K CPU. We'll see if that's the case a little bit later in the benchmarks. On the back as always is a description in different languages and right here you can see the model name again along with some additional specifications such as the clock speed, amount of cache and socket. And up here you can see the processor itself inside the box which we will now open to see what is included. Well I actually know what's included but you get my point. As always the Intel Core i7 processor installation instructions with a brand new sticker on the back. Of course there's also a stock cooler included. It's still the exact same one we've seen since the Intel Sandy Bridge CPUs. That's a very small heatsink actually. Thermal paste comes reapplied already. But now to the most important part, the CPU. It's inside this plastic case. I'll quickly take it out so we can take a closer look at it. Here it is now, the new Intel Core i7-4770K Haswell CPU. It looks pretty much the same as the previous generation Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge CPUs. The size actually is the same, but again, this new processor requires 5 less pins in the socket. So we come from LG1155 to LG1150. Now let's move on to the specifications. The Intel Core i7-4770K is a quad-core Haswell CPU with a base clock of 3.5 GHz and a turbo clock of 3.9 GHz. So nothing changed here over the i7-3770K. However, this processor now features new integrated graphics, the Intel HD graphics 4600. The TDP increased by some watts, it's 84 watts now. The Ivy Bridge i7-3770K had a 77 watt TDP, although this new Haswell processor also is manufactured at the 22 nanometer process. 1 MB of level 2 as well as 8 MB of level 3 cache is offered. This CPU supports dual channel DDR3 1600 memory natively, just like the Ivy Bridge CPUs did. In my case I'll test the CPU with the Gigabyte GA Z87X UD3H motherboard featuring the new Z87 chipset. But before I forget I'd like to tell you that Haswell is a little bit different. All Haswell CPUs have built in VRMs. This means you will not be that dependent on your motherboard power delivery system. So there's no need to buy a board with a big amount of power phases unless you're planning to go for some really extreme overclocks. So in simple words, you can go for cheaper motherboards now, in terms of the power delivery system. In CPU-Z you can once again see the specs. The new Haswell CPUs also come with a new power saving feature, the C6-C7 power states. This allows the CPU to run at very low voltages on idle with a minimum of 0.05 amps instead of the 0.5 amps on Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge CPUs. However, because it's only 0.05 amps, lots of power supplies will not be able to support this new power saving feature without switching themselves off. But don't worry, most power supply manufacturers now label their models whether they support the new C6, C7 power states or not. If your power supply does not support this new feature, you can simply disable it in the BIOS. Also, the Haswell processors now come with new instructions such as the AVX2 and FMA3 for example. And because of the new C6, C7 power states, the CPU will be able to run at a much lower clock speed on idle than before. 
instead of 1.6 GHz on the i7 3770K, this new i7 4770K is able to run at 0.8 GHz, so 800 MHz. That's pretty impressive. I know you can't see that here because I'm not idling, I'm screen recording right now. As always, because this is a K-series processor, it comes with a fully unlocked multiplier, so you can overclock it very easily. I will also make a video on overclocking this processor. Also, you now just like on AMD CPUs, also have a CPU-oriented bus speed to change if you want to. So you no longer need to rely on the risky BCLK clock. As you can see, I have DDR3 2133 MHz memory installed. Just like Ivy Bridge, the new Haswell CPUs have no problem with high frequency memory. Now in GPU-Z you can see the integrated graphics, the Intel HD graphics 4600. The highlight is the DirectX 11.1 support. And if you really need or want to use the integrated graphics, which you doubt though, on such a processor, you can overclock the graphics separately to get more performance out of it. But enough talking about the specifications and the features. Let's move on to the benchmarks and see what this processor really can do and if there's an improvement over the last generation.
So there you have it, the Intel Core i7-4770K definitely is not a bad processor, however there's a good and a bad side. This time Intel leaves us with some evil surprises. What can I say about the performance? Well, there definitely is a normal improvement noticeable over the previous generation Core i7-3770K CPU. The rendering performance got better a lot actually and the same thing in games. Only in games that rely more on the CPU though. This i7-4770K really has some great new physics powers that result in an overall higher frame rate in games. You can get 3 to 8 FPS more in the same games with the i7-4770K compared to the i7-3770K. That's very impressive actually, because it's just the CPU. The i7-3770K was very powerful already, but if you're a really hardcore gamer that wants every single possible frame out of a game and if you want to do some demanding 3D rendering or video rendering, the i7-4770K is a good choice. The integrated graphics performance got a lot better compared to the previous generation of integrated graphics, although the performance is far away for decent gaming. So the iGPU in my opinion pretty much is worthless on such a high-end processor. It simply takes up space that could have been used for more transistors in the CPU die. But now to the evil surprises. Temperatures. Although this was expected already, the temperatures are really high. Last year a lot of reviewers and consumers complained about the high Ivy Bridge temperatures. This year however, with Haswell, you'd certainly wish to have the Ivy Bridge temperature results back. The i7-4770K, but Haswell altogether, runs very hot. My Corsair H100i water cooler barely is able to keep the core temperature below 80 degrees Celsius on stock. Yes, you heard right, on stock. With all the turbo ratios at 39, resulting in a full 3.9 GHz turbo, the temperatures pretty much go all the way up to 90 degrees Celsius. And that's with the Corsair H100i water cooler. Therefore there's almost no overclocking headroom, because the temperatures just get too high. But what about the people that buy the CPU and don't have an aftermarket CPU cooler or don't want to spend extra money? Well, the included stock cooler is definitely not able to keep the CPU cool on stock speeds. That's absolutely ridiculous. When cooling the CPU down on stock speeds with the stock cooler on full load, you get to 100 degrees Celsius and the CPU will start thermal throttling itself, because it runs too hot. The throttling results in 10 to 20% less performance depending on how much is throttled. And I was testing this at an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. Anything above will cause even more problems and throttling. So let's say you're gaming and the CPU reaches 100 degrees Celsius with the stock cooler. The CPU gets throttled, which means less performance and therefore you could eventually end up with lag in the middle of gaming. Also because the temperatures are so high, the CPU temperature sensor will give the signal to spin the fan at higher RPM values. This will lead to an overall louder computer system. If the temperatures just were the only problem. Unfortunately the power consumption increased a lot as well. On idle it pretty much is the same, but on full load the power consumption increased roughly 27% compared to the previous generation i7 3770K. That's kinda sad for the consumer, but this makes AMD's FX CPUs stand in a better light now since there's not so much difference anymore when it comes to the power consumption. So I list all the good things about this i7-4770K now. First, it offers more performance than the previous generation i7-3770K, rendering and games. Has a new power saving feature, the C6-C7 power states, which apparently don't help very much. Then the iGPU, the integrated graphics performance got a lot better, the CPU also comes with new instructions and a selectable bus speed. And because the Haswell CPUs have built in VRMs, you can now save some money by not buying so expensive motherboards with a better power delivery system, so more phases. You don't rely on these that much anymore. Now the bad things. First off, the temperatures are horribly high, which means you pretty much have no overclocking headroom and you can't even use the included stock cooler without sacrificing CPU performance due to the thermal throttling. 
Last but not least, the power consumption, which increased a lot over the last generation. This definitely is a big step backwards. So now to answer the questions of the consumer. Is it worth it to upgrade your system from Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge to Haswell? The answer is no, unless you want that few extra frames in games. But you don't just need to buy the CPU alone, but also a new motherboard. But who actually should upgrade to Haswell? Well, people with older platforms from years like 2010 or earlier. Power consumption wise, it still will be an upgrade from the older platform. So this time Intel didn't do it all perfectly and I'm honestly disappointed. I know there are lots of reviews out there that say that overclocking works really great and that the temperatures and power consumption is lower. But this is not the case here. And because I'm not sponsored and bought this processor myself, I'm reviewing the retail version of this chip. This is the real i7-4770K you get as the consumer, the retail version. Pros are great performance, more FPS in games over the previous generation processors and high frequency memory is supported. Unfortunately, there are some really heavy cons. First, not the best price performance ratio. Very high temperatures, which means you have almost no overclocking headroom and that the included stock cooler is not able to keep the processor cool. The CPU has to be throttled. And last but not least, the power consumption increased over the previous generation processors. And because these are some really heavy cons, I can only give the CPU a 6 out of 10, but still I would recommend the i7-4770K performance wise. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit nicholas11x12techx.com to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.